squeeze past my fair share of nettles to make it to our field maple that I filmed in winter and spring. And that's really highlighted one of the unforeseen benefits of making this project. And that's that I've had the opportunity to visit all the locations of the trees in all four seasons. So I've seen the changes throughout the year. I've noticed them more this year than I ever have before. So I really recommend going back to the same sites in each season that are near to you or your favorite outdoor spaces. Explore them and get to know them at different times of year. But I've had quite enough of pushing through all this stinging nettle growth here. So let's get to the field maple just behind us. Remember, the field maple is an acer, so it's closely related to the sycamore, which is the other tree that you'll see with similar shaped leaves to this. Looking closely at the field maple leaves, they're a very dull, dark green colour. There's not really any glossiness to them at all. If we single one out here, we can see it's got that classic maple leaf shape. In ID books, you might well read that the field maple leaf has three pointed lobes, but I think that does these two basal lobes at the bottom of the leaf here a bit of a disservice. I would describe them as having five. Although these two basal lobes are smaller than the other three and they point out at 90 degrees to each other. And looking closer at these three main lobes, you could also describe them as being lobed themselves. Each one of those lobes is broken up into three points itself. It's worth running your fingers on the underside of the leaf. You'll feel a little bit of resistance there, a slight hairiness. And if you look closely on the underside of the leaf, you will see on the veins at the points where they divide, called the axles, little groups of fine white hairs. And then you can feel, as I said, with your finger, those fine white hairs across the bottom of the leaf even if you can't really see them with the naked eye. It's worth pointing out as well that there could be quite a bit of variation in the size of the field maple leaves. Look at this one on my left hand, the smaller compared to this in my right. And looking at these smaller leaves in detail, the edges are more rounded, more soft, so less pointed than the larger mature leaves. Also, don't forget that the leaves of the field maple, as is true for all maples, are in opposite pairs on the branch. They're not alternate on that branch. So there is a distinctive feature which can narrow down our search as to which tree we're looking at. Now you might read in some ID books that the field maple has a twisted bowl. Now it's not something I would list as a distinctive feature. I haven't seen it often enough. But I thought it's worth stopping here because there's a really great example of that twisted bowl. And here it is, you can see it with the light that we have at the minute, it's really quite clear on this tree, that twist that's coming round from the base of the tree and slightly turning as the tree grows upward. So worth looking out for, but not a distinctive feature. I've come away from under the shade of the field maple so we can get a better look at some similar species. Now I've already mentioned sycamore, which is the tree you're most likely to confuse it with, but let's get the two leaves up side by side. Here's field maple in my right hand and sycamore in my left. You can see they've both got those five pointed lobes, the classic maple leaf shape. But the first big difference is that the sycamore leaves grow bigger than the field maple. Also, the sycamore leaves have a much more serrated edge to them. And there are other differences between the field maple and the sycamore, which we'll get to very soon. There is another species though, that if you come across it, you could well confuse it for a field maple. In fact, you could confuse this for a sycamore as well, and it's not. At first glance, you might think it is, but this is a Norway maple, and this is not a native, but it is widely planted. First, let's put it side by side with our field maple. Again, the big difference is the size of the leaves. And also, the leaves of the Norway maple are a lot more sharply pointed. They're a much more dramatic leaf all round. And also, generally, the Norway maple is a much bigger tree. While we're here though, let's have a look between the sycamore and the Norway maple. 
and now things start to get a little bit more tricky. Easier when I've got a sample side by side in each hand for you to compare, but you can see why when you're out about in the countryside and you haven't got one beside the other to compare, how you could easily make that mistake. Again, the Norway maple is much more sharply and dramatically pointed than the sycamore. You can see why there would be confusion in identifying these two trees. But of course, with you guys studying hard on this tree ID course, it's not a mistake you're gonna make, is it? As a final word on similar species, I will say this. Aces, or maples, are widely planted in people's gardens and they're all sorts of varieties that have come over from Asia and other places from the Americas as well. So if you think you've got a field maple in somebody's garden, just think again, you might well have an exotic maple or a cultivated variety. There are literally hundreds, so take care and remember, key principle one, tune into your surroundings. If all this talk of similar species and similar shaped leaves though is getting you a bit confused, we do have one last distinctive feature to discuss which defines the field maple. Now hanging off from a bunch of stalks here are these distinctive wing seed cases. Kids call them helicopters, don't they? Because when they throw them up, they spin in the air down to the ground. And that name helicopters also applies to the sycamore seeds, which are similar, but there are some differences which we will get to. But looking closely at the field maple seeds, there are two seeds side by side and there's a wing for each seed. And what's noticeable is that the wings are generally at 90 degrees to each other. And that's important because when you compare it with the sycamore seed cases, which I have here, they are much more downward pointed. The wing cases are much more at a more of a 45 degree angle, even sharper in fact. So thinking about the difference in angle of those seed cases is an easy way to distinguish the field maple from the sycamore at this time of year. Another feature that you can get on the field maple seeds here, although I've not seen it in the specimens I've been looking at, is that the tips of the wing cases can sometimes turn a bright pink. And that pink, offset against the lime green, reminds me very much of the colours of the elephant hawk moth. So using that little wildlife link is a method I use to jog my memory and remind me that we've got field maple seed cases. Looking at the field maple tree here at a bit of a distance, and I admit it's difficult to get too far back because there's a sea of nettles behind this camera, which I'm not delving into. But even so, I can tell you that there aren't really any distinctive features for identifying the field maple from a distance at this time of year. All I would say is look out on the fringes of the tree as you approach it for those distinctive silhouettes of the five-pointed maple leaf. Well, that's about everything for the field maple in summer, and we're gonna come back in autumn and I wonder what kind of display the field maple will give us. Because when we think of maples, you might think of the fantastic fall display of New England and Canada. There's beautiful deep reds and golden yellows. So I wonder what the field maple will give us. We'll have to wait a few months to find out. See you then. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope it's piqued your interest to find out more about the beautiful native tree species that we have here in Britain. But before you go, I wanted you to know that this video is actually just a taster of a much larger tree identification video course that I've created for people just like you. 
The full course covers over 50 tree species that you'll commonly find here in the UK. And we look at those tree species in all four seasons, starting in winter to spring, summer, and then finally autumn. In each season, we're gonna be picking out those distinctive features, which means you'll be able to identify the tree no matter the time of year. As well as videos like you've seen today, the full course also includes hundreds of photos, you're gonna get questionnaires on tree species, and you'll also receive a certificate at the end of the whole course. Let me help you see the wood from the trees as I take you from tree beginner to tree expert. To find out more, simply follow the link in the description below and you'll also get access to two more free tree ID videos as a preview. So you're just one click away from becoming a tree expert. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again in the woods.